What's going on? Pluto Premium here back with another Epic Summon video. And today we're going over the update for September 1st. Here we go, starting out with the Grace of Growth. So this is something that I'm really looking forward to. You're going to be able to plug in any five star unit, any four star unit, any three star unit, and they're going to instantly become level 60 max Mola max awaken. Now there are some conditions to this. So you do have to meet the conditions in order for you to be able to fully level up this hero and max mola them. You'll be able to choose from your roster, whatever unit that you want essentially, and register them for the grace of growth. And the grace of growth again will allow you to just plug in whatever unit that you want and fully max them out. While they're plugged in though, uh, you can't use them in certain places like arena defense, things like that, right? GVG defense, uh, but you can use them in RTA. You can continue to gain EXP from them, friendship, all that good stuff. Uh, there is a 72 hour cooldown. So once you withdraw a unit, they go back to their original level and uh, you have to wait 72 hours before you can register another unit. But I think that's fine. Uh, if you want to speed up that process, you can use 720 sky stones, which I don't think is, uh, is recommended, but definitely excited for that. Moonlight theater, neither God nor devil exists. This is the new ML theater, right? We're going to get some more story on all of these MLs that we've been getting. Uh, and this is kind of interesting because it, it looks like they're giving us specific rewards for clearing each act. Uh, you do have to have these tickets and if you have the ML units, so the Moonlight units that they show on the cast board, you get a free ticket for each one of those. And I believe it's a free ticket for each act. Uh, I'm not too sure, but you can always buy the tickets from their little shop. And I believe each ticket costs like 500k gold. Yeah, it's 500k gold. You can buy uh, one ticket. Uh, you should have at least the four stars, hopefully, right? Hopefully. Uh, but the other ML five star is going to be rough. It's going to it's going to be rough to have every single one of those. But moving on, we're getting some UI changes to the hero screen. So mainly they're going to be kind of pushing everything together and giving us the stats and skills on one screen. I think this is going to be nice because it's going to keep us from having to click that little drop down, right? Uh, clicking the drop down, seeing the stats and then clicking back to see. Uh, the other information so now it's all on one screen you'll be able to see all of your units as well on one screen instead of just having to filter through that little uh little wheel on the side of units you can star heroes now as favorite heroes uh you can use that little star icon and uh it's supposed to help with i guess keeping units up at the top I think, I think that's what it is. I don't know if you can favorite more than one unit. I guess we'll see. Uh, but you can actually see the skill tree all in one screen here. They're giving us a button for the skill tree. Uh, there was something else here that I thought was pretty nice, and that's the standard and details view. So the standard view is going to give you their skills and their stats all in one screen. And then the details is going to give you the friendship, the hero story, and uh, an ability to preview their stats. You can also even remove the gear view uh, by clicking on that little eye which is pretty interesting i think they're giving us a lot of options for how we see our units here which is i think a good change so we'll see how the favoriting works uh, but i'm surprised they, they don't have a show only favorited that i think would really help for like rta right you only show the units that you use the most or you want to play with the most something like that uh, but we'll see Looks like they're also making some slight tweaks to the equipment details screen. We're going to have the ability to uh, instantly reforge from the actual gear screen and modify that equipment. So I think that's going to be pretty neat. It's going to those shortcuts really help. Again, it's just quality of life. Uh, we're getting episode 48S Broadwind Plateau. Along with this comes some more farming. So gold transmit stone, 600 AP points, Molagora, 400 AP points. So this is a perfect time to farm this 
story because you're getting that double AP, right? Double AP with the buffs that are going on right now, the Azarin Foundation buffs. Awaken Aiden is also gonna be dropping the new version, which is the ice version. So we've gotten quite a few already. Uh, this time we're, we're getting Serene Purity Aiden and uh, you know, she looks pretty cool. Color scheme change. I think that uh, she's getting like a new, uh, like a new attack, right? Torrent. So she's able to decrease defense for two turns. It's a 50% chance, uh, but then she gets Torrent after attacking with a basic skill. If it is a single attack, deals additional damage proportional to the damage result. And we've seen that she's actually really good uh, in all of her different forms so far in PvE. And I think this is great. I think that they uh, are doing a pretty good job with Aiden so far. We still need two more. We've kind of already seen what the ML version looks like, right? So we're just missing uh, one more Aiden here before the ML. And I can't wait to see the ML one. Uh, moving on to Commander Pavel. So the new five-star Moonlight hero. And we haven't made a video for him. But uh, he seems kind of interesting, right? Cleave unit for sure can potentially destroy you uh, in, in one shot. And that's kind of his thing, right? He seems a little bit difficult to position. Uh, he also, I believe, uh, ignores damage sharing effects, which is kind of crazy. Uh, he scales based on uh, whether his attack is greater than the target's attack, right? And he def pens <laughs> on top of that. So it, it, it's it's one of those where you don't know until you test it, right? It's kind of like Edward. When he dropped on paper, he looked insane and was just Pepega, right? He's just not good at all. I mean, he does, I guess, what he needs to do. But he doesn't deal any damage. He doesn't do anything other than just his S2. Uh, but moving on, we got the three new exclusive equipment dropping. Uh, so the first here is Command Model Leica. She's getting a 10 speed boost. She's already decently fast, so adding 10 more speed on top of that. We'll see how that goes. So she has Supporting Fire, which is which now is going to increase combat readiness with the ally with the highest attack instead of a random ally. Volley Fire increases Volley Fire's sleep effect chance by 10%, and increasing damage dealt by Volley Fire by 10%. I think the one that if you're going to end up using Leica, if anything, right, she's going to be really fast, support, dual attacks, things like that, is probably going to be the supporting fire, right? Increasing combat readiness of the ally with the highest attack. So you're always pushing, CR pushing the unit that deals damage, right? Moving on to Roaming Warrior Leo. He's getting a 10 speed buff with the exclusive equipment. So he's getting... Uh, a change to his fire slingshot if you decide to go with that one it increases fire slingshots decrease attack by 10 percent decrease attack i mean not so great but we'll see uh, go raku this is his s3 has a 30 percent chance to activate fire shock bomb as an extra attack so it's only a 30 percent chance right 30 percent chance that you actually activate it everything else you do you still do nothing Right? You still do nothing. And then it's on a random enemy. So it's a 30% chance and then it's a random unit. So it could potentially go on a unit that you don't even need to land anything on, right? Go Raku, his last one, it's just going to increase effectiveness for two turns. I think that it should have had something to deal with the bombs or it should have just activated the shock bomb as an extra attack, right? Because that's what the grass leo does but maybe that would have been too strong i don't know i've i've never really used roaming warrior leo so let me know if you've played with him and what would have made him broken moving on to furious he's getting a 14 percent attack boost uh furious a staple in wyvern 13 teams i think now this is really going to cement him in that wyvern 13 team starting off with his quick draw here Incre increases quick draws burn effect chance by 25%. So you got an additional 25% chance to hit the wyvern for burns. Fatal bullet, this I believe is his S3. Uh, you can restrict the target for two turns when using fatal bullet or 
you have a 75% chance to decrease hit chance of the target for two turns when using Fatal Bullet. So uh, this Fatal Bullet is going to decrease defense now and potentially restrict, or you're going to go with a decrease hit chance, right? So I think that's pretty good. Uh, a lot of people already run him on like a burn artifact or like Daydream Joker if you're trying to do damage with him, right? Something else so that he can be a bit more consistent. I don't know why they just didn't do 100% chance to decrease hit chance, right? They know people use him in Wyvern, but they want to give you that RNG. Not sure why. We're getting a new artifact prelude to a new arrow. This is the artifact that we're getting for the login check-in event for Azarin Foundation Day. Uh, this one is it's kind of interesting. It reminds me of Portrait, like Portrait of the Saviors, right? This one celebrates the new era with a cannon salute. When attacking, if the target's health is 50% or more, increases damage dealt by 20%. So this one, the, it, you don't need to level it up, which I think is great, uh, but uh, we probably still will, right? Because you get still some bonuses from attack and HP. Uh, some some more stats, right? If you plus 30 this, so you'll get an additional, what, like 195 attack, which is still pretty good. And this is going to go in a damage dealing unit, right? So you want as much stats in attack as possible. Again, you're going to get that from the 15 day check in event. Next up, we're getting the expedition boss rotation. So we're moving on to Brutal Ferris, Blooming Snag Lich, and Pain Pursuer Moroi. And that's going to start with the September 1st buff. Uh, we're getting a coin shop renewal. And it looks like this reset, we're getting Tenebra and Mort for the RGB coin shop. And we're getting Ambitious Tywin and Bellion for the ML shop. Moving on, we're getting Edward Elric buffs. So this is, this is why I mentioned you never know. You always pull for limiteds, okay? You always pull for limiteds because you never know if they're going to get buffs. But let's see whether or not it's actually worth it, right? So my biggest thing with Edward is, one, he does no damage, right? Two, he takes forever to S3 again because he has insane cooldowns. And three, he does no damage on the S2 and just gets perma stun, perma debuff even though he has a cleanse, right? He has a one debuff cleanse. So let's see what they do here. So five star Edward Elric, uh, what they're doing here is increasing the damage, right? They're increasing the damage on his S2, so equivalent exchange, after being attacked when the caster has a debuff, dispels one debuff and activates Rise. Rise can only be activated once per turn. So before his s2 or his passive was on a cooldown so after he used it once he couldn't cleanse and he couldn't attack again that's it so any unit that hits you with two debuffs or hit you with another debuff after you've already used it right like a stun that's it you couldn't do anything about it but now he's going to be able to cleanse that, that's it right that he damage don't increase the portion of the caster's max health I guess he can just cleanse himself now and then that's it. I, I don't think this is going to be enough. I think that him being able to cleanse himself and hit you uh, with the debuffs, that that's where his money maker is, right? Uh, and then going into the S1 and dealing a lot of damage. But uh, I mean, you know, just remove the cooldown from his rise attack. I think that'd be perfectly fine uh, because it's only going to activate if he has a debuff on him, right? He'll cleanse hit you with the debuffs and then that's it because if he gets attacked again he's not going to activate it so it's going to be on a cooldown until he gets debuffed anyway right i don't we'll see <laughs> we'll see how that goes all right last but not least we have roy mustang and ignition clock gloves so will this be the true limited unit of the collab we're gonna wait and see but we're gonna be able to pull for him after the maintenance all the way up until September 15th. So keep that in mind. Roy Mustang on paper is set to do insane amounts of damage, but keep in mind, if he's not good, he has the potential to get buff. We already saw that with Edward. So they it looks like they are listening somewhat to the community. So 
go out, test them. Grace of Growth is going to be our biggest tool to test out these brand new units. And we're going to pull him in day one and we're going to plus 15 him right because of Grace of Growth, which I think is going to be awesome, which lets everybody at least test him to his full potential. But uh, moving on, don't forget the video password, which is ML Theater. Make sure make sure you pick up your three leaves and 300 k gold but that's gonna be it for me let me know your thoughts about this september 1st update i'm really excited about the grace of growth uh, let me know what you think about this artifact you know i was thinking for some reason it was going to be a five star artifact but it does remind me of portrait like always if you haven't enjoyed the video hit that like button if you haven't subscribed hey think about subscribing it really helps the channel grow and reach more people like you who like content like this like always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time peace